Okay guys, welcome back. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about the interpretation of uh, strategic form representation or normal form representation. Uh, so let me write them to the normal form or vers uh, not versus strategic, they, they mean the same thing, Str strategic, uh, strategic uh, form representation of these two examples, two uh, uh, games, and then I'm going to talk about the relationship. So if you look at this first game, all right, so player one moves first, A or B, and then if it is A, the game is over with these payoffs. If it is B, well, then the second guy moves, and he has two options, C or D, and uh, regardless of his choice, the game is over with the respective payoffs. So the strategy sets here, the first player has, because he has one decision node and two actions at that decision node, he has two to the power one, uh, A and B are the strategies, and the second player's strategies are C and D, because he has, again, one decision node and two available action this decision node, so two to the power one, two uh, uh, strategies. So, as usual, I will always put the first player on the row and the second player on the column, all right? So the first player has two strategies, remember, A, B, and the second player has two strategies, C, D. And whenever it is A, C, doesn't matter, it's whenever the player one plays A, the game is over, one, two, one, two. But if it is B, well then, if it is C, it's gonna be three, one. If it is D, it's gonna be two, four. So we can represent this game tree with this strategic form. All right, what about this example? All right, so this is another game, right? And they're similar. You'll see the difference. So once again, player one has one info set, so two available actions, and therefore two to the power one, two strategies. Player two, he has two decision nodes, but be careful, both decision nodes are included in the same info set. Therefore, he has one info set, and hence, in this info set, there are two available actions. So two to the power number of info sets, which is one. So there are two strategies and they are C and D. Very similar to the first one, right? Very good. Well, what about the matrix form or the normal uh, form? Well, once again, if it is A, all right, and whether it's C or D, the second player plays, the payoffs are one half, one half. And in the second part, if it is B, the first player plays B. Uh, if, if the second guy plays C, it's three, one. If he plays D, it's gonna be two, four. Hmm. So therefore, I can represent this game with this matrix form or normal form. And also, I can represent this game tree with this uh, normal form. What does that mean? That means I can represent, uh, you know, each, uh, each game tree can be represented by some strategic form, but this relationship is not one and one. Meaning, for each strategic form I have, I can actually construct two different uh, game tree, uh, which are going to lead to exactly the same uh, uh, normal form representation. All right? Um, so, that just, I, I wanted to underline this. I mean, why is this important? Well, sometimes analyzing uh, normal form games is not the right thing to do. We should actually go back to the original game, uh, whether it's this one or that one, and then analyze them, all right? Which we will do later when we talk about extensive form games. All right. Um, and again, this is simply because the relationship between uh, extensive form games and the strategic form games are not one and one. Okay, what about the interpretation of normal form games, though? I mean, uh, uh, why it makes sense to analyze normal form or strategic form games? Well, it may actually uh, uh, make sense because the normal form game can be literally uh, the case, all right? So what, what does that matrix tells us? Uh, it basically tells us the following, all right? So whenever I see a matrix uh, form of a game, uh, we call them one-shot game, 
Okay. Um, sometimes, sometimes we call it. We mean exactly the same thing. Uh, simultaneous move game. Simultaneous move game. Okay. Um, so. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, this type of games, we call them one-shot game or simultaneous move game. Clearly, uh, if this is the real game that corresponds to this, this is not a, a simultaneous move game or one-shot game. What do we mean by one-shot game? That means players choose their actions simultaneously, literally, or... Uh, not exactly the same time, but without observing each other's action. All right, so this is what simultaneity means. So when I choose my action, I don't know, I don't observe my opponent's action. So I choose my actions without knowing what my opponent did. This is what we mean by simultaneous move game or one-shot game. We just go into separate rooms, we choose our actions, that's it, that's the end of the game. Later we learn the outcomes, all right? However, once again, um, you know, the original game does not need to be a simultaneous move game, right? I mean, for example, here, it's not really simultaneous. I mean, the first player makes a move first, and then the second player makes a move, all right? I mean, by the way, is the outcome of this game and the out strategically outcome of this game and this game are the same? That's a different discussion. We're not there yet. But what I wanted to say is that, uh, you know... Uh, Sometimes um, it may make sense to analyze these games, these strategic form games, because the game itself is literally, the strategic environment itself is literally simultaneous move game. Examples. Um, prisoner's Dilemma, standard uh, classic example, the Prisoner's Dilemma. I, I will give much more examples later when we talk about you know, simultaneous move games section and when we do extensive form games section. But one standard example is like Prisoner's Dilemma. There are two, uh, two guys, uh, uh, there are suspects of a murder, but the thing is uh, the evidence is not so strong. And so the police is taking those two suspects into different rooms and asking for sort of a confession, all right? So the thing is, uh, if one guy confess and the other doesn't, well, then the confessing guy is going to get benefit out of it. Uh, if they both confess, well, it's not good for neither one of them. If nobody uh, confess, well, then the outcome is, is kind of good, but not super. So forget about the payoff structure. But the thing is, you know, these two suspects are in different rooms and they need to make their decisions whether to confess or not without knowing the other guy's decision or choice, all right? So the, the strategic environment is completely simultaneous and literally simultaneous in that sense. I mean, they don't need to confess at the same moment, but when they make a confession or not confession decision, they don't observe the other guy's decision. Here, however, if the A, B is like confess, don't confess, confess, don't, don't confess, for example, well, the second guy already knows the, what the first guy did, all right? So uh, they, they, they're not strategically equivalent, maybe. Um, um, uh, but yeah, this is one interpretation of strategic form games. Some games are simultaneous move games. And so we just look at the uh, matrix form. Some games are literally extensive form games, and so we analyze the, the, these games in an extensive form game or game tree form. Um, but our first investigation is going to start with uh, uh, static games. Oh, another name for them. Static game. It's not dynamic, all right? There's nothing uh, uh, sequential. So we're going to start our analysis with static games or one-shot games because they're easier to uh, analyze. And then uh, once we sort of build enough uh, 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 tool, we're going to jump to a slightly more complicated games, which are extensive form games. But before we go there, we're going to talk about one more thing, which is basically beliefs. And it's coming up in the next episode. All right. See you then. Bye-bye.